All right, Bible readers, today we are going to talk about what is Acts 6 about. So the transition continues is kind of what I'm calling this video. But we're going to talk about what chapter 6 of Acts is about. So I often talk about how the book of Acts is really a, a, it's a transitionary book. It's a super important book to understand what happened between the dispensation of law, which had been in place for hundreds of years, and that ended when Jesus Christ died. The book of Hebrews talks about how the New Testament is in his blood. Okay, so just like any last will and testament today, it doesn't take effect until that person dies. And so in this case, the New Testament doesn't technically begin until Jesus Christ dies. And then we have the book of Acts, which transitions to the Apostle Paul's writings into this new dispensation, the dispensation of the grace of God, for which the Apostle Paul is the minister. Acts chapter 6 is an important one because it's kind of the setup to where Saul becomes the Apostle Paul. And in the, in the chapter 6 here, we're going to see this man by the name of Stephen rise to a position of influence, you might say, uh, where Paul ends up, or Saul, before he becomes Paul, ends up taking him out. Okay, so there is a lot going on here. And what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to go through my summary. I don't, I don't normally do that, but today I just felt like this, this, it was the right thing to do for this chapter. So that's what I'm going to do. All the notes are here. So this is the first chapter in the book of Acts where we start to see a focus on the Greeks. Every chapter prior to this has been a very Jewish chapter. And I've mentioned that and made no bones about it. But in chapter six, we're going to start to see this like, wait a minute, the Grecians are standing up saying, hey, what about us? That type of thing. So if you read the chapter and it's short, it's 15 verses. So I encourage you to read it. So again, Acts is a book of transition from the dispensation of law to the dispensation of the grace of God. Hey, if you've never heard the word dispensation before, hit me up. I've got a complete study on this and it will clear up your head as far as dispensations go. Um, it won't give you all the knowledge in the world. Okay. That's not what the intent of that is. But most Christians are one of two area. Uh, they're, they're kind of in one of two places with the word dispensation. Either, one, either they've never heard it or maybe they've heard it, but they don't have even a really good working definition of what that word means or what it's about or why they should even care. And trust me, if you're a Christian trying to live your life, you need to understand dispensations. All right. Second point here, this is the first chapter in Acts, where the, and I mentioned this, we start to see the Greeks coming into the picture, and that's that, that happens right in verse 1. The Greeks are concerned that their widows are being neglected. Okay, so that's, that's what the Grecians are standing up saying, hey, our widows are being neglected. So apparently there was some kind of maybe rift going on here, rift, uh, where the Jewish widows were being taken care of, but the Greek widows weren't. Okay, I don't know, I'm reading between the lines there, but for some reason... The Grecians felt they need they they needed to stand up and say, hey, what about us? And so, again, it's the first time we kind of see this in the book of Acts. All right. So then the 12 apostles call for seven disciples to appoint over this business so that they can give themselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And this happens in Acts 6, 2 through 4. All right. So Stephen was chosen first, or at least he's listed first. And was full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So there was something about Stephen. Then, as always happens in life, certain Jews of various synagogues arose dis disputing with Stephen. So whenever somebody starts to do something really uh, profound and kind of stand up, well, there's always somebody to come around and try to knock you back down. Okay, we see this on social media constantly. A, a person can post anything. They can say anything, and someone will, come, someone will come along and nitpick the grammar. They'll nitpick what could have been done. They're, they, they'll, they'll nitpick about what should have been done. They'll, they'll say what I would have done, and you're stupid for not doing it my way. And it, it's, just, it's just this never-ending thing. It's hilarious to watch. Okay, so but it was happening, happening right here that as soon as, as, soon as a man stood up and, 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 and people recognized him as having power, and doing great things, then the religious crowd comes along and goes, ah, I don't think so. And so they're disputing with Stephen in Acts 6, 9. So here's something that's super interesting. 
I didn't see this until recently. It's very possible that the that Saul of Tarsus, okay, the man that eventually became the Apostle Paul, was a member. Well, we know that he was. Well, we I say we know. Okay, scholars are pretty certain that that Saul of Tarsus was a member of the synagogue of Cilicia. And so it's very likely that he was one of the men disputing with Stephen here in Acts chapter six. And it's no big surprise because uh, in a few chapters, something very important is gonna happen with this man called Saul of Tarsus. All right, and then Acts six, uh, 10 through 15, which is to the end of the chapter, it details how these men could not resist the wisdom and the spirit by which Stephen spake. So in other words, Stephen is speaking, he's having influence over the disciples. And there's, there's a certain small group, these men of these synagogues that were mentioned above, that they just, they just can't take it. Number one, they can't answer him. They can't respond adequately to, him, to Stephen. And so what do they do? Well, they discredit him. And they do this by hiring men to say that Stephen spoke blasphemous words against Moses and against God. None of that was true, but they just hired men to, to be false witnesses. Okay, happens all the time, happens to this day. Um, and then the chapter ends on a high note of something that's quite unique, all right, which is Stephen's physical countenance changes to the point where the, his face appears to be the face of an angel. And everybody in this council sees it, all right? And, and so then the chapter just kind of ends, like, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's interesting. So it's, it's kind of a big dramatic setup to what's going to happen in Acts chapter 7, which I'll cover tomorrow. So um, I hope you read this chapter today. I appreciate you being here. That's all I've got for you. I'd love for you to comment and let's have some conversation about Acts chapter 6. All right, that's all I've got. Please subscribe to the channel. Share this video with somebody that you think might get some encouragement out of it. And listen, if you need or want or desire to be in a Bible study with some other people, every Tuesday night at 555 Central Standard Time in the United States, I do a Bible study. It lasts for about an hour. Depends how long you want to stay around. I do my Bible study for about 45 minutes, and then there's time for questions, discussion, or fellowship, or whatever, whatever you want to do. And sometimes we hang out for quite a while and chat. So um, that's available to you. All the details are in the in the description. So um, if you have any trouble with any of that, just hit me up directly and I'd love to have you in my Bible study. All right. Thanks again for being here. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.